biggest bear you've ever seen. His hide littered with the weapons of fallen warriors, his face scarred with one dead eye. I drew my sword and... Whoosh! Once wipe his sword shattered, then chomp! Dad's leg was clean off! Peter, I know that you're a, a big Pixar fan, certainly in the past. Yes, Is yes. the magic starting to wane for you? I have to say, it sort of was. I was very baffled and perplexed by Brave because I was really looking forward to it. I read some really interesting things about it. But to me, it looked weirdly like a pastiche of a Pixar movie created by people who didn't have the Pixar talents for humour or for interesting plot. I found it completely perplexing. I spent an hour and 40 minutes kind of waiting for it to start, in a way. I was completely amused by it. Uh, it's a weird car crash of almost two different films. At the first, yes. the first chunk of it is almost sub asterisk slapstick comedy, isn't it? Of lots yes. of people falling over and getting hit on the head and, and lifting up their kilts and yes. all of that kind of malarkey. Uh -huh. But then after that, I actually found it was like this kind of weird, dark Paul Arago fairy tale when it goes into the forest, and I quite enjoyed that. Catherine, as, as our own Marinda, um, what did you <laughs> make of it? Um, no, I agree. I think I lean more towards. Uh, your point of view than Peter's on this. And that later part, without giving away anything, it sort of reminded me, do you know that David Garrett book, uh, Lady into Fox? It sort of reminded yeah. me of that, and that, you know, there's sort of quite a lot of moving, moving stuff in it, really, in the end, which mm. took me a bit by surprise, because, as you say, the opening is... <laughs> I d I, that's fine. I, I get that. <laughs> I get that. I really do understand that on a personal level. But the, the idea of what actually is happening and the fact that she, there's nothing interesting happens as a result of that, really. I don't get the impression that she's learned very much about herself, mm. or that she's learned very much about her mother, or that she's learned very much about her own development, her own, her own development as, as lady into something else, or something into lady, or, or any of this, this chrysalis into butterfly ideas that we seem to be sporting with. Uh, I, I, a lot of people have said that it's kind of like a Ghibli movie, kind of like a Miyazaki movie. Again, that baffles me. Mm. It seems to be like a lot of other animated movies by DreamWorks and Pixar, but just kind of done in this weird half-hearted way. There's a slight disarray to the film, I'll certainly admit that. There are, you know, the, the character of the witch which is just kind of comes nothing. in for one scene and, and then, then it's, it and is then it's gone. booted out. And the ending felt very abbreviated and yeah. kind of hastily yeah, wrapped exactly. together. Yeah, exactly. And all that stuff in the ad material, that if you could change your destiny, would you? And thinking, what destiny? What, what is this destiny that she has? What is, it she, what is it she's changing it to? What? It seems to be completely, uh, completely opaque to me. I couldn't, I couldn't get to grips with it at all. I am Merida, and I'll be shooting for my own hand. What are you doing? Merida, curse this dress! <laughs> Merida, stop this! Don't you dare loose another arrow! Merida, I forbid it! <laughs> 